Tim, looking specifically at the UK market, um, what do you see as the prospects uh, for the retail sector? Well, we're fairly buoyant and optimistic about 2015. Unlike some of the corporate market, which is perhaps worried about uh, what's happening geopolitically around the world, the uncertainty of a forthcoming election, the one thing we have in the retail market is consumer certainty. And consumers feel that they've got more money in their pocket, they feel they might get a pay rise, they're feeling wealthier, and that benefits retailers. In the UK, obviously, the headlines have been uh, focused on, on Tesco's particularly. Um, how do you see the prospects for, for the food retail sector in general in the UK? 2015 is a transitionary year. We're going to see a fight back from the big four, not least Tesco's, but they still hold 28% of the UK grocery market. And together with the main rivals, Morrison's, Sainsbury's and Asda, they hold 75% of the market. And they're not going to let go of that anytime soon. The reasons that we are predicting that the big four grocers in the UK will be able to fight back compared to the discounters is they've got other places to go. Yes, the discounters are discounting, they're investing in price. The big four can all do that. They've got huge pockets, but it's not just about price investment. It's also about provenance, it's about good service, and it's about variety. And the big four can offer that, the discounters can't. How do you see um, convenience retail as opposed to shopping centres? Research shows us that people shop on average for only 37 minutes a day. That's online and offline. So that's only about four hours a week of attention that we have to grab. Therefore, if retail isn't convenient, it's inconvenient. And therefore, we predict that convenient retail should be able to um, attract some price premium because consumers want to shop there, retailers will want to occupy it, and investors should want to buy it. So how do you think some of these themes will play into the investment markets? I'll look back at 2014 for a bit. Uh, it was a huge year, it was a record year. We saw £65 billion worth of property traded. Now 2007 was uh, 63.5 billion, it's not far off, but we've just seen a record year. Going forward, there isn't much that's going to change to stop that. Yes, we've got a general election, and historically we've seen general elections stall things, but we believe that will be a short stall and that the weight of money in the market and the fundamentals will mean that property investment carries forward. On the retail side, people are going to be very selective. We think an absolute prime yield, there'll be a race to go for the very, very best. But the interesting place is the secondary market, where we think there'll be a polarisation between sort of prime secondary and proper secondary. Prime secondary being those areas that can be properly asset managed, where you get a bit of yield, that will be attractive to people borrowing money, smaller investors, and real secondary being something that people want to avoid because there is no solution.